Welcome back, everyone, for yet another exciting presentation of our Johnny's Ambassadors Anti-420 um, Conference to Youth Marijuana Prevention. We have with us um, a very, very special guest, someone near and dear uh, to my heart, who has been uh, a great encourager and a mentor, Sally Schindel. I'm going to read her uh, her bio. She is the founder of Marijuana Victims Alliance, which is a volunteer uh, with Marijuana Harmless Think Again is the organization, and she's also on the advisory council for Johnny's Ambassadors. We are very grateful. Uh, for her time and advice. She is a frequent speaker on victim advocacy for marijuana-related death or loss, marijuana's role in addiction and suicides, and networking with other families suffering loss. Additionally, she was instrumental in the formation of Mom Strong and is also very active in Parents Opposed to Pot and Every Brain Matters, incredible allied organizations of Johnny's Ambassadors. And Sally, you have been such a great uh, proponent going so far as to put our Johnny's Ambassadors frame on your profile picture in Facebook <laughs> and always um, such a, a personal advocate of mine, always emailing me, encouraging me, and um, I just admire you so much. Thank you for being here. Well, thank you, Laura, for having me here. I'm uh, I'm honored. And I'm pleased, and I'm so amazed at the work that you have done in in a short period of time. And I'm just I'm proud to be your friend and proud to be a part of Johnny's uh, ambassadors. And uh, this is a little new for me today to focus on um, suicide. I really haven't done this before, so um, wish wish me luck. Um, a, a little little bit about me. I am um, hmm, trying to advance my slide here. Uh, you may need to just click on your slide. Sometimes it goes off the, there you go. There we go, okay. Um, I, I call the work that I do uh, helping Andy help others. Um, my son, Andy, um, did enjoy helping others. He felt that was one of his strengths is helping his friends who had, some who had gotten into some trouble with drugs. and. Um, so he very carefully stayed away from hard drugs. I, I didn't realize until too late that um, the marijuana was uh, causing my son a problem. He taught me a lot about marijuana. This is Andy in the year 2011. Um, Andy and his beautiful dog Tritium and me, and we were in the house that Andy and I owned together in Mesa, Arizona. Uh, Andy was in college at the time, and at the time he went into that house, he was probably at the at the peak of his best years. He had been a, um, I wouldn't say a great high school student because he didn't try as hard as he could have, but he was a good high school student. He was an excellent, excellent worker at the jobs that he did. Uh, he went straight into the army from high school, and he uh, excelled at what he did in the army and advanced a little bit. He was a paratrooper. He learned to jump out of airplanes with the 82nd Airborne. Um, he came home and felt absolutely on top of the world. He went to work part time. He was using the GI Bill, uh, which is, was his purpose in going into the army to pay for his own college education. He was just a little boy when he told me one day. Um, Mom, Mom, have you ever heard of the Montgomery GI Bill? I think he was nine years old and I really didn't know what that was. He said, they pay you for college. He said, you're saving money for my college, but would you save that? Just keep that for me. And if I earn my own college, would you then give me that money so I can start a collection of cool cars? He had goals and he had dreams just from the time he was a little kid. And at the time of this photograph in um, 2011, he would have been, um, 20, he was born in 1982, so he was 28 years old in the spring of uh, 2011. And he'd, he'd um, by this time, he had started recognizing in himself that he was having some mental health issues. Um, he swore up and down all the way through that it was not PTSD from the Army, that he, he was very sure that he didn't have symptoms of PTSD uh, flashbacks. Uh, he, he saw doctors, he was beginning to see doctors to say, what is this going on in my head? And I, I was beginning to notice he was becoming a, a different person. And this had started just shortly before this photo. 
And sadly, it was shortly after that photo that um, he really started to go downhill quickly. Some, some uh, scary and dangerous things began to happen. Um, today, the, the Laura's session today for 420 began with Kevin Sabet from Smart Approaches to Marijuana Sam talking about his book, Smokescreen, that's uh, released to the public today. And uh, Kevin has a uh, chapter that's nearly entirely about Andy and some of the things that I don't share when I'm speaking in person. It's just too painful for me to do, but I did allow him to share those in the book. Um, so I suggest you probably want to read that book. Um, there are many, many good things that are in there, but, uh, but I'm honored that my son Andy can help others by our sharing his story. Andy taught me that pot is not healthy for children and other living things. This was a poster. Um, some of you may remember that war is not healthy for children and other living things. And it it's, dates back to uh, the beginnings of my experiences with what I thought marijuana was. I was a child of the 60s and in college in the late 60s and the 70s. And uh, marijuana was a little joint, a small one, shared among a whole party. And everyone there could get giggly and uh, get the munchies. And, and it was fun. And actually, I do remember that I, I had never seen what, what we see today, not only the edibles and concentrates and things, but I'd never seen those flowers and those buds. Um, because we we were what we were seeing was homegrown stuff, and it was um, it was leaves and stems, and it's probably mixed with other things too. I, uh, so that had been my experience with marijuana, and toward the end of my son's life, uh, when he began telling us that he was addicted to marijuana, that he needed to quit to live, that it was making him suicidal. Um, we weren't understanding that at all. Um, that it, we thought marijuana is not addictive. Andy's suicide note said, marijuana killed my soul plus ruined my brain. And I, I didn't see this on the date of his death. Actually, the police took that from his bedroom and it was quite a number of days before they would allow me to see that. And when I did, it was the first time it started to click with me that, gosh, he must have been serious about marijuana, but how can marijuana do that? So I began researching marijuana and I began finding things saying that marijuana is indeed addictive. And I, and I missed that. And I had been trying to help Andy find his, his mental health care and he had been hospitalized um, involuntarily, well, kind of voluntarily, he would call suicide helplines and say, I'm, I'm scared and I'm suicidal. And uh, um, they would ask him a couple of standard questions each time. One was, do you have weapons in the house? And Andy was ex-military. He had a, a collection of guns and he'd answer honestly. And actually what they would do is go to his house and uh, pick him up and take him to an emergency room and they'd put him into a psych hospital for a couple of weeks and then they'd spit him back out again. And, um, it didn't help. He's, he had a marijuana addiction. I learned years later after Andy's death and I was able to obtain written copies of his medical records that he was diagnosed with severe cannabis use disorder. So I learned about marijuana the hard way and too late to save my soul, uh, to save my son. Um, my soul is just fine. I, I have come to learn through my work um, what Andy meant by marijuana killed my soul. He's, he was isolating. He, he was removing himself from friendships and from family. And um, some of the things that I learned as I began to speak about marijuana, I began to understand more about the the loss of a soul and how marijuana is killing souls. Uh, one of the first things that I did was take his suicide note to the um, drug abuse prevention organization in the small county where I live in Arizona. And they asked me to speak about it. And I scared me to death. I'm a speaker, um, not a professional speaker by any means. And the topic was difficult. And I, and I was kind of scared of it. And uh, but they they made me brave. Um, one of the first speaking engagements I ever had was at the middle school in my town. Uh, it was about suicide and about marijuana. 
and I had someone from the mental health um, agency speak about suicide, and I spoke about marijuana and spoke about Andy. And I invited some of my friends, and three of them came, and a wonderful um, uh, writer from our community newspaper came and wrote this beautiful article. And a parent came, one parent, a parent, and a whole entire good sized. Um, junior high school. So I learned some things from this. I learned um, the schools really don't want to have these things because the parents don't attend. The parents don't even want them to do that. Um, perhaps the parents are drug users themselves, in particular marijuana. I learned also that there are people who will try to stop me and others that are speaking here with uh, Johnny's ambassadors today. They'll try to get us to stop doing what we're doing. They try to scare us. Social media comments are just absolutely brutal. These are the kinds of things that have been said to. And this was on a newspaper article about me, a grieving parent, and my son, a young man who took his life um, at a young age. I, it, for someone to, to do this, I've, this is what I've called, come to call the killing of a soul. To, to make a person defend their drug to this point where they would say something like that. Um, and that's common. And I have been taught not to read them, but sometimes I still do because you know what I've found is they have thickened my skin. It doesn't hurt me. Um, it doesn't scare me away. It, it motivates me and reminds me I need to keep doing this. Sometimes I say, don't you want to quit doing this? Um, but you know, I. I meet friends along the way that are so important to me, friends like Laura and the other speakers we've had today. And those of you listening to me today, if you haven't listened to all the speakers so far today on this series through Johnny's Ambassadors, um, you'll, you'll have the links to these to watch later. And I urge you to do that because every one of them has just absolutely been excellent. And there's speakers I've heard before, but each time I hear them, they've, um, They've changed their presentation a little bit, and and they've uh, they've found better ways to have more important messages. I really encourage you to listen to all of them, as well as the whole entire series that Laura Stack has created for Johnny's Ambassadors, her uh, her expert webinar series. I, I haven't seen one yet that wasn't just absolutely excellent. And this is what all of you that are listening need to, I, I know most of you that are listening are probably already doing the same things we do and you're educating, um, but share this work and get it out to other people. And the number one thing I would like to do personally is to help other people do this. Um, I don't want just Andy's story being told. I, I want the other families that have been impacted like I have been and like Laura has been. I want them to step up to and start doing this. It's not at all as hard as it might look. Um, I was scared. I'm still scared every time I do it. But you know what? It always comes out okay somehow. I think it's Andy with me. Those of you that have heard me speak before know that I always do this. I put Andy's dog tags on and Andy's with me. And that's one of the reasons I do this is it keeps Andy with me. He's, he is my son forever. I am not walking away from the relationship I have with Andy, and I've found I can I can build that relationship. I also wear this, and that's Andy's thumbprint on a heart. My uh, dear daughter had that made and gave that to me. So Andy's still with me. He's with you here today. He's talking to you today, and he's reminding you he has that message. He wants you to help others. Marijuana kills souls and ruins brains. Also resulting from that newspaper article early on, I met some people, um, most importantly, Lori Robinson with Mom Strong, who created the organization Mom Strong. Also, Ann Clark, and Ann is in Colorado as well, and Ann's son, Brant, you can see my arrow, he's down here. Ann, Ann's son, Brant, was 17 years old when he experienced marijuana psychosis and he died by suicide. And I don't remember the exact year, it might've been um, 2013 or 2011. It, it, it was before there were other people like Lori Robinson and like myself that were willing to speak about this and, and tried um, 
speaking about it, wrote a uh, an opinion piece in the newspaper, and oh my gosh, Anne was so attacked by the horrible, horrible um, marijuana people that uh, that just would not have somebody saying anything bad about their drug. Um, so so Anne spent many years in her own recur recovery, grief grief recovery. And she's written a book, Gone to Suicide, an excellent book about her experience and about her son's experience. Um, I, I call this the year of books. Anne's book came out, I think, last year. Kevin's book today. Laura's book will come out on 710. And uh, I've recently read a, another one called Woe Dude, which I thought was excellent. It's uh, really um, uh, directed toward a, a reader, a young, younger reader. Um, that's the title, Woe Dude. Uh, these are these are things we all need to be sharing the work that each each other what we're all doing one of the things Laurie Robinson created with mom strong was are these two posters uh, called the mom strong quilts and I have each of these um, printed very very large and put on poster boards and I take those with me when I go to events where I can put up a table about marijuana to talk to people about marijuana and to point out the many ways that marijuana kills. It's uh, it's not just suicides. I, I know personally there are a lot of suicides. And on these quilts, there are, I think, 30, 35, 35 lives lost to mar marijuana various ways. Some are traffic crashes and, um, um, but of those, of the 35 individuals on there, there are 15 that were suicides. 15 out of 35 is roughly 40%. It's a huge number. So a suicide, and this is my task today to, to talk about suicide. Is, is suicide a, a, a factor? It, is marijuana a factor in suicides? And I learned early on, I'm, I'm not a scientist, I'm not a medical professional, and I'm not, not really very good at um, reading the scientific literature, but I do uh, respect it. It's very, very important. So I looked for things that are meaningful to me that I can talk to other people like me that don't necessarily need all, all the science just to just to look at um, is there correlation? Is there um, does it appear that marijuana does indeed um, contribute to suicides or cause suicides? So one of the things that's important to me is what are the leading causes of suicides? And in this chart, and it's too tiny to read, I'll tell you from, from the left side is uh, age zero up through uh, the last column is, is all lives. Um, suicide is the 10th leading cause of death across all ages. But what's really important is uh, from, from the ages um, in the, the second, third, and fourth columns, Marijuana or suicide is the second leading cause of death. The first being accidental, but the, the, the second leading cause of death in young children, in young people with lives out all the way ahead of them. And it's what this speaks to me and says to me is, is it's, it's, it's a, it's a trend. It's a meaningful factor. And, and we should know. So what can cause a person that age to feel suicidal, and could be could marijuana be one of the things? So I begin to ask those questions. I began to, in my research, find some things, and I found a paper uh, that I think it was titled something like "Marijuana Legalization Reduces Suicides." So I print the paper and I try to read it and I try to understand it, and uh, and it was written by three either PhDs or PhD candidates, and uh, you know it looked all legitimate and peer reviewed, and it, it, I mean to me to a novice it it looked legitimate. I thought, oh, could I be all wrong? Maybe maybe legalization somehow reduces suicides. Didn't make sense, but I thought I need to know more about this. So I tracked that thing down to the point that, that I learned about, I think it was the Drug Policy Alliance, is where I had found that paper. And then I began to learn about who the Drug Policy Alliance is. Their, their mission is to legalize drugs. And, and I learned to read the paper better, and I found the fine print in there that said that the paper had been presented to a university in Germany for review. And there's even finer print that says, this should not be presented as um, a, a, 
paper that's been in a journal. It hadn't been. So I began to understand marijuana industry, um, they can be kind of deceptive. So I, I learned better what to look for in scientific um, literature, even though I still can't read it. And I found myself absolutely buried in paper, so I don't even try to do much of that anymore. Uh, but I saw trends. Um, this from Colorado Violent Death Reporting System about Colorado suicides where marijuana, uh, when marijuana is detected and the number of suicides has been increasing. More from Colorado Violent Death Reporting System. The number of suicides are increasing and it's correlated with the years that marijuana has been legalized and commercialized and promoted. Marijuana present more than alcohol is present when we're looking at suicides. I have a kind of a, a favorite researcher. Um, her name is Dr. Christine Miller in Maryland, and she wrote a wonderful paper that is on the Johnny's Ambassadors website. And it explained to me, and it still goes into way more depth than, uh, than a novice like me understands, but I get the gist of it. And what she did was apply uh, what's called the Bradford Hill Criteria for Causation. I've just shown you slides showing you correlation. There's correlation between the dates of marijuana legalization and the increased usage and suicides. Um, but correlation does not equal causation. Dr. Miller was looking for, is, is there indeed cause, causation? And she did the work. And the if you look on Johnny's Ambassador's website, you see her work in there. And I'm just showing you one of the six pages of her references of the actual scientific literature, the peer reviewed literature. And I'll just show you this slide just to show you how, how much there is in the scientists that do the work. Then she went through the six criteria and she said, asked, is there correlation? Is there association? And answered, yes, clearly there is. And, and she used those citations to show that. And is there consistency across the, um, uh, sorry, my, my screen doesn't show me the whole screen here and I can't read that whole thing. <laughs> uh, let me see here. Trusting my audience can read that, okay. Um, we can, uh, we can see consistency across research sites and methods and sequence okay. caused okay. prior to outcome. And, and, the, and the next one, sequence, and I'm going to read you what that says in, in the detail. She says about this the sequence that um, the existing data is strongly suggestive of an appropriate temporal sequence in some but not all studies, but in some. So it's still, it's still important. The next is their biological gradient. In other words, does more of the agent cause more harm? And, and look, look at the trend you were seeing in those charts I just showed you. As marijuana THC potency has been increasing, these outcomes have been increasing. And is their biologic rationale, does it make sense? Does it make sense? I certainly saw it in my son and it makes total, total sense to me. And Dr. Miller uses the science, um, the peer reviewed science to show that it does make sense that marijuana THC is changing the brain. Can it change the, the brain to cause that kind of harm? Of course. Is it coherent? Is it in, green, in agreement with what is already known? Dr. Miller went through these criteria. Um, is there, Evidence, yes, there's evidence. My son is evidence and Laura's son is evidence. Um, there's a tremendous amount of evidence that there have been there have been suicides that appear to be highly related to marijuana use. Um, Dr. Miller's uh, research concluded that that sequence is strongly suggestive if if not, uh, you know, in, entirely supported by the science. But, but of the other criteria that are important, uh, she is convinced and I am convinced, and I think her paper does a great job of 
um, suggesting that we, we need to all take this very, very seriously, that marijuana is causing suicides. My answer to that is yes. Oh, Laura, can you help me? How do I fix my screen so that I can see the entire screen here? Oh, I can move myself up and down. That helps. Okay, okay I don't need to see myself, do I? Um, so, so I wanted to answer some other questions uh, about suicide. And uh, one of the questions that I have I have seen, and then I see that uh, Laura and Johnny Stack experienced this, that Johnny was not using marijuana at the time of the suicide. He had ceased his use for a period of time too. So, so there's an important question I think is, is um, you know, does cessation um, take away that suicide risk? The, it takes a long time for suicide to leave the body. Uh, for, for marijuana to leave the body. Marijuana is adhering to fat cells in the body, and it's not like alcohol that washes out in in the blood and such in a short period of time. It's it, it lasts. So it takes quite some time for marijuana to leave. And then it takes some time for the brain to heal from the changes that have been made in the brain. And then perhaps risk factors remain. Um, maybe there were mental health or physical health uh, issues that were there before the marijuana use started. Maybe the environment that the individual is in is, is stressful and remains stressful. Um, maybe their means, means is means of taking one's life. And the important one there is firearms in the house. If the means remain, the risk remains. Perhaps there's unemployment in the picture, which is of course causes enormous stress. Um, Perhaps there's his, uh, history in the family, and maybe there's there's trauma in the past, and uh, trauma uh, requires a lot of treatment and training. Maybe there's a family history of suicides, and there does seem to be a correlation there in families when there's been one. Um, it's not unusual to hear that future generations will also have a suicide. And then uh, one of the most important suicide risk factors is have there been previous attempts? And I certainly saw that with my son. He made uh, several suicide attempts and each one actually is increasing the risk of an eventual successful attempt. And I didn't witness my son's previous attempts. That was him telling me that he had and he told me his dog was his protective factor, that uh, every time my son took a firearm to himself, his dog was all over him preventing that. Some of the signs of suicide risk that you may hear, if, if you have someone in your life, someone in your family, that you see any of these signs, or it even just crosses your mind a little bit that there could be suicide risk, I ask you to please tune in to this. Do you hear them talking of hopelessness, of being a burden to others, feeling trapped? Do you see anything in their behavior that they're isolating, that they're fatigued, that they're aggressive? I saw this with my son. He was giving things away and he was saying goodbyes to friends and to family in certain ways. Um, what do you see in their mood? Are they angry? Do they have shame? Do they have anxiety? What can families do? Um, number one, never underreact. Consider it extremely serious. Don't judge them. Don't ask many questions. Just talk and learn and have patience. Um, let, let, them, let them talk. Let them be doing the talking. Build your connection with them. Increase the number of times you're saying, I love you, and encouraging them to tell you, I love you. Please do this today, write down this number, 800-273-TALK, 273-8255. Um, that's the Suicide Prevention Lifeline, and there are trained people there 24-7 who can talk with you. And I ask you to write that down. You might wanna share it with someone someday, but also I ask you call them someday and ask them if they have a minute or two to talk to you. I, I'm, I'm not uh, saying, 
call them and tell them you're suicidal. Call them and tell them you're not suicidal, but you're concerned about the issue, or you know someone who's concerned about the issue, and you want to know how they handle a call, what your loved one would be. I'm, I'm serious about this. I've, I've called them a couple of times. And, and just ask them to help me understand better suicide and, and how, when someone calls that number, how they help them, what they do. So are there known suicide deaths from marijuana use? Oh my goodness, yes, there are. These are known stories. I know there are so many more, but I, I know the many more we may never hear about because it's very difficult for some families to talk about this. Some just absolutely can't. But all of these families, a few of them I know from newspaper articles, so I don't personally know the family, but most of them I personally know the family now. Um, Johnny, of course, in Colorado, in Miami, in Arizona, and I know the other families in Arizona that are listed here. Um, yes, there are definitely known suicide deaths from marijuana use. So I'm near the end of my time period here. I'm gonna zip through a few pictures of my beautiful son, Andy. As a little boy, he was an absolute joy. And I, I went through a grieving period of, oh my God, I lost my baby. And then I realized, no, no, no. I haven't lost any of this. These are still my memories. They're here forever. And I strengthen the memories and I create new memories. I have not lost this boy. Andy served our country, and then marijuana took his freedom. This is uh, mentioned in Kevin's book, Smokescreen. This is inside the columbarium where he's buried at the National Cemetery in, in Phoenix. His ashes are in this urn, and uh, I put that beautiful picture not only on the urn in there, but I put it in his pocket before he was cremated. I chose his cap that he's wearing here and some of his favorite clothing that he wore when he was cremated. And beautiful tritium, died an old age dog death last year. He had a good life um, and he's now with Andy. I'm so glad they're together. That's the book I want you to read. It was just released today. You can read more about my Andy in there. And I heard Kevin say the other day that certainly Johnny Stack would have been in this book too had he met Laura earlier. That's my mom's job these days, is helping Andy help others. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Letting me share with you today. Yes, and um, not to to give away anything whoop i turned your <laughs> i turned your <laughs> webcam off for a second turn it back on for me I'm coming back here i am <laughs> I did. you're dismissed didn't mean to do that <laughs> um, i was trying to turn your screen off and i turned your webcam off um but i i don't want to give it away um but uh, your story in in smoke screen is um, so compelling, and and there are details that I'm not um, going to share here, but but um, it goes into um, much more depth, and it's uh, in, incredibly touching. And I think any any parent, any concerned adult, any trusted adult, anyone uh, who have works with youth um, needs to read that and understand that that is the path that many of our children are sadly taking who use this poison um and we must we must um keep them from from following andy's path and johnny's path and and we cannot uh lose any more uh, young people to suicide well, and laura may i share here that uh laura laura allowed me to preview her book that will come out in july uh, early draft of it yes. so i've read a lot of Johnny's story and oh my god it broke my heart it and, was um difficult to write uh, oh, must have been. five years of you know digging up um the past just as you know you've had to face um with Andy but I hope um, people read it and just you know realize as as parents we do we do everything we can I mean everything I I could you know um so many treatments and doctors and and mental hospitals and um programs and you know just desperation and and it all starts uh with marijuana and i i am 
100% convinced if marijuana had not been legalized in Colorado, my son would still be here. A hundred percent. So, my, you know, we've got to fight it. Mm -hmm. My son, Andy, died in 2014. Um, we did not have recreational marijuana in Arizona at the time. Oh. Um, I'd, I'd never heard of, uh, I'd heard of brownies. <laughs> I'd never heard of any other kind of edible. We didn't have... Um, Dads we, had, we had medical dispensaries and shortly after Andy's death, I started going to the medical dispensaries myself to not to buy, of course, but to ask them to teach me about marijuana. So uh, that's when I started learning about bud and flower and edibles yeah. and they looked like candy stores. And, we um, all need to go to the dispensaries. Yes, yes. You know, there, there seems to be this resistance to, oh, well, I'm not going to go in there. Um, you need to go in there. You need mm -hmm. to touch the mm -hmm. products. You need to talk to the bud tenders. You need to see what mm -hmm. our teens are seeing out there um, in their schools, uh, mm -hmm. on the streets, at parties. Uh, we need to be prepared before uh, one of our children go to a party and there's a, a kid with a, a cart and a vape and a 99% distillate and they say, here, hit this. You know, we, we need to be able to educate ourselves first. Um, there's no way we can help these kids. Mm -hmm. um, so the work you're doing and have been doing is so incredibly important. And I've just, um, I've listened to you so many times and every time I get insights, uh, what you just presented, um, this is this is really important work for you, Sally. I, um, and someone else said here, oh, Janet Rouse, hi, Janet, uh, says that your, uh, does marijuana use increase the risk for suicide, that that slide series uh, is so important. Uh, and she thanks you for um, sharing it. Um, Marjorie says, honored to be with you and Andy today, Sal, Marjorie McGuire. That's my sister. Um, Hi, sister. Yes. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hello, sister. Um, Nancy says, uh, God bless you for being strong uh, and fighting for the youth of our country. Um, another says, every legislator should have to listen to all of these presentations today. Uh, if they can vote pro-THC, after hearing all of this, God bless them. They are in a worse place than anyone. Wow. May, I, may I share at this point something my own Arizona state state representative, not now, he's out of office, thank God, because what he said to me was unbelievable. He said to me to my face one day, Mrs. Schindel, actually he mispronounced my name, Mrs. Schindler, um, you should stop doing what you're doing. Um, and he said, you know, your son's death was so unusual. You just, it just doesn't matter. I, can you imagine to my face, he said this, I, no soul, the loss of the soul, the loss of the soul. He said, 70% of the people want marijuana. We should give it to them. I sure hope someone says something like that to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have uh, some some choice words. You know, the thing is, I think people say that, Sally, because they want to shame us. Um, they want us to be quiet. They want us mm -hmm. to think, oh, well, clearly uh, you were a bad mother. You know, Sally, I wasn't a perfect mother, but I was a pretty darn good mm -hmm. one. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you and I, um, it's it's not a reflection of our parenting skills. And I think that they want us to believe that it was our fault and by staying quiet um they can kind of make us you know go back in our our little shells and and not reveal the truth and it's going to take a lot of people who are uh, brave and in your bravery has encouraged other people to speak their truths um we're going to uh you're doing the walk with us the stop dabbing walk uh, in September, um, and very uh, blatantly, you know, holding our signs uh, to stop dabbing and getting media attention, getting in social media. We need a thousand Twitter impressions in that walk for people to uh, to get to trend on Twitter. Um, so, I think you know, Ed said it before in in his talk, but there are just a lot of very 
mean uh, a, a pro marijuana people out there. I don't know what it is. Um, you do have to really have a thick skin. Um, it is, you know, I, I, you know, ignore them, delete them and try, like you said, try not to read the comments. Um, but it is hard and it, it is, it can be uh, wounding and you just, you just need to constantly <laughs> remind yourself that you were a good parent and you were a good parent, Sally. You know, yeah. it's, um, yeah. it's hard when you have something that's not, um, our, our kids would be here if it weren't for marijuana, you know? So it's hard um, not to uh, place that blame. I think, it, I think it's harder all the time too, because I think kids, um, as soon as they're able to, they start parenting themselves with their phones and the internet and social media. Yeah. They, um, you That's know, true. they may love their families to death, but but they, you know, they can find the information that they want to find. Right. And then there's just like adults. Yeah. Just like adults do that too. The, uh, you know, marijuana proponents can find all kinds of support for their positions. So um, true. Um, let's see. Um, people feel shame. There's shame and addiction and shame keeps people quiet. Yeah. Um, and unseen, and and we are going to work hard to keep their spirits alive, um, and to share their warnings. Uh, Andy left a written warning. Johnny's journals um, are full of his warnings. Uh, his warning three days uh, before he died um, that it ruined his mind and his life. It's it's shocking. It's startling to me. Um, Sally and I have found so many commonalities uh, yeah. in our stories as we've moved through this. Um, I'm sure that they are up there together, very proud um, of us and, and the work that we're trying to do on their behalf. On their behalf. Um, we need to keep telling kids and adults that Wikipedia is not a scientific resource. Good point. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, you are such good parents. Uh, uh, Nancy says you're sacrificing your own grief to advocate for our children. Thank you. Uh, never be quiet. Saying that it's a parent's fault is just a cop out on their part. It takes the whole village. That's I mean, we we have to hold our media accountable, our schools, uh, advertisers. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. there's a lot of organizations. Smart Colorado got a billboard, uh, a roadside sign taken down um, that was advertising 710 Day, uh, and people just seem like they have no clue what's going on. So it's up to us. Uh, to raise our voices and to really uh, speak about the harms in our communities. A hundred percent to the comment that all legislators should be required to watch this. Hey, um, you're going to get the recordings and you can get uh, email addresses of every legislator in your state. It is, uh, you're right, there's a, that information is readily available and send them these links. You can't make them watch it, but at least you can say, hey, we are working to educate um, our legislators. Um, mm -hmm. Teresa's on. Hi, Teresa Hoggins. She says, excellent talk. Thank you. Um, if you Google uh, information, the pro pot information shows up first. That's so true. Yeah. Um, you know, and we all have to keep writing and blogging. Uh, we have a blog that we write every week. Um, Sally is in my book. We're going to be putting excerpts uh, from my book. And if you have guest posts that you would like to include, uh, please send those. We've got to get on top of, you know, when marijuana is Googled, we want an anti-marijuana, you know, marijuana prevention site uh, to come up first to give real data and real statistics like what you shared. Um, mm -hmm. Sally, that information is uh, was incredibly uh, valuable. And uh, some people closing with thank you. Uh, thank you. Love you. Love you too. Thank you. <laughs> Love you too. P W O us too. Um, and Sally, thanks so much for putting this together for us for this uh, great information and mostly for being my friend and one of Johnny's ambassadors. Yeah. Thank you, Laura. Thank you for everything you're doing.